Hello everyone. Welcome back to the lecture series on multivariate calculus integration. Now in the first introductory lecture, we have given you an overview of the course and primarily we have discussed single variable integration. Now the idea of that single variable integration will be actually extended to multivariate integration. And here we will learn double integrals and triple integrals. What are these? That also we have told you briefly in the last lecture. Double integrals are concerned with functions of two variables of the form z equal to fxy and are integrals of the type fxy dx dy over some region r where r is a region on the xy plane. And we should also remember that z equal to fxy represents a surface in the xyz three-dimensional space. Triple integrals are now concerned with functions of three variables of the form w equal to f of xyz and involve integrals of the type f of xyz dx dy dz over some region r where r is now a region in the xyz three-dimensional space. Now we will begin our journey with understanding of double integrals. At the onset, we will understand double integrals over a rectangular region. Later on, it will be extended for an arbitrary region. So therefore, we have a rectangle R where X varies from A to B and Y varies from C to D. And we start with a function fxy which is defined and continuous on this rectangle r. And we now want to define the double integral of f over r denoted as fxy dx dy over r. So how do we do that? For that, let us recapitulate for a moment what we did for single variable integration a to b fx dx. There we had subdivided this interval a b into small sub intervals. Here also we proceed in the same line. The only difference is now we do it for the interval AB as well as for the interval CD in the Y direction. So let us look into that here in this figure. This interval AB has been subdivided into sub intervals by this points A equal to X0, X1, Xi to Xm equal to b and in the y direction the interval cd has been partitioned by the points y0, y1, y2, yj, yn. So this basically gives us a partition of the rectangle r and this partition set p actually consists of this grid points xi, yj. And what is happening actually under this partition? Under this partition actually the rectangle R has been partitioned into small rectangles, we can see. So let us see that in the next figure. So here, we can see here a small rectangle Rij. And now, how many such rectangles are there? Now, obviously, the number of rectangles will be M into N, and let us call that as capital N. So the entire rectangle R has been broken up into capital N number of non-overlapping rectangles Rij where I varies from 1 to M and J varies from 1 to N. Also just observe that this rectangle is having the length Xi minus Xi minus 1 which we will call as delta Xi and it will have a width Yj minus Yj minus 1 which we will henceforth call as delta Yj. Now, we will look into the products of these quantities delta xi, delta yj and f of ij which stands for the value of the function and the point xi, yj. And we now consider the sum of all such products given by summation fij delta xi, delta yj where i varies from 1 to m, g varies from 1 to n. Now, let the number of partitions capital N, which is actually small m multiplied with small n, tend to infinity in such a way 
that the area delta xi delta yj of each small rectangle rij tend to zero. Now, if this sum exists under this limit, that is, if limit n tends to infinity, summation a phi j delta xi delta yj, i varying from 1 to a m j varying from 1 to n exists, then this is called the double integral of the function fxy over the region r and is denoted by fxy dx dy r. So, to summarize, the double integral of a function fxy over a rectangular region r, which is denoted as fxy dx dy over r, is given by the limit of a sum, which is this expression, limit n tends to infinity, summation fij delta xi delta yj, i varying from 1 to m and j varying from 1 to n. Now, this is the mathematical definition of the double integral. But what does this physically represent? For that, let us look into this expression once again. Now, see, delta xi delta yj, we have just now told, this gives the area of this small rectangle rij. And a phi j, that is the value of the function at the point xij. So, that basically gives you the height. So, look into this figure now. So, delta xi delta yj is the area of this small rectangle rij and a phi j is the height. So, therefore, the product gives us what? Obviously, it gives us the volume of this rectangular parallelopiped. So, therefore, just now have a look that the concept of volume is coming in in the double integral. And now, as we sum up these products of fij delta xi delta yj over the entire rectangle r, so what we are doing actually, we are adding up the volumes of all these small rectangular parallel pipettes. And obviously, as n tends to infinity under the limit, these rectangular parallel pipettes, they are becoming infinitesimally thin and therefore the volume of this rectangular parallel pivot will now be seen as the volume of this cylindrical solid whose base is the region r and the top surface is your given function z equal to fxy. So finally what we get is the double integral fxy dx dy gives the volume of the solid which is bounded below by the base region R on the xy plane and above by the surface z equal to fxy. So this is a very very important result to be understood. And now we have now defined double integral for a rectangular region but life will not be always so smooth so we will now extend our idea for finding the double integral over an arbitrary region. So now here in this figure, we have an arbitrary region omega. And suppose that this arbitrary region omega is enclosed by the rectangle R. So now to find the double integral fxy dx dy over this arbitrary region omega, we extend actually the function fxy. We define a new function capital fxy with domain R as given by this expression. So what is that? Capital FXY is equal to small fxy if the point xy lies in omega. And if the point xy lies outside omega, then it is zero. Then obviously we can see, we get this result that the double integral small fxy dx dy over the region omega, that is equal to the double integral capital fxy dx dy over the region r. Now this is very obvious from our definition only because we have just extended the function from small fxy to capital fxy. Small fxy was in omega and capital fxy was in r but outside of omega the value of the function has been taken to be zero. So obviously these two are equal. So, this is how we can define the double integral 
over an arbitrary region omega. And because the double integral over the arbitrary region omega is has been shown basically to equivalent to this double integral over the rectangular region. So therefore, this we can case obviously that this is also defined by the limit of the sum as usual, where the base region will be subdivided into small sub areas. Okay, and what it will represent physically? Now, of course, if this integral represents volume, this also will represent volume. Only difference will be now that now the base region is not a rectangular region. The base region is omega. So that we see in this next figure that a cylindrical region like this will be formed with the base region omega and the top surface z equal to fxy. So now the double integral fxy dx dy over this arbitrary region omega will represent the volume of the solid, let us call it say t, which is bounded below by this region omega and above by the surface z equal to fxy. Okay, so having understood that double integral represents volume, we now see a very interesting result. Double integral can sometimes represent area also. How is it? This happens if we take fxy equal to 1, then see that the double integral fxy dx dy reduces to double integral dx dy. And now here we have only dx multiplied with dy. We don't have the third dimension. And dx dy, of course, gives you an elementary area. So as we add up areas now, the double integral dx dy over omega will represent nothing but the area of the region omega. So once more to summarize, see that the double integral fxy dx dy over omega is actually defined as the limit of a sum. And this integral represents the volume of a solid, a cylindrical region basically, whose base is the given region omega and the top surface is the given function z equal to fxy. And in the special case, the double integral dx dy gives you nothing but the area of your base region. So these are very two important facts to be remembered for the entire module. And we will see several applications and problems using these concepts. But before we go to applications and problems, the next important question is, how do we evaluate these double integrals, right? We have not seen that so far. But this will be taken up in the next lecture. So goodbye till then. Thank you.